Okay, good morning. Uh, it's interesting to, to try to give a presentation in English when most of the audience is, is has Portuguese as the first language. So if you have any difficulty, just please interrupt and ask any, any question you may have. Uh, I work for Red Hat since 2000. Okay, that's fine. So I work for Red Hat since 2007, and before that, I had a uh, Linux company in Brazil that uh, all the people may uh, remember, uh, Connectiva. We had a, a Linux distribution, and we uh, employed lots of uh, developers in Brazil for a long time. Some of them are, are here in the audience. Lots of them are working with free software, this day, free and open source software these days. But today, I'm here to talk about uh, things that I do as a member of the uh, Linux community, and uh, that my employee allows me to do and expects me to do, so that we can understand more wh what happens inside computers, what happens in the interactions between the various components in a modern system. I'm be I'll be talking specifically about one of the tools in the Perf uh, tool chest, that there are many. Uh, the one I'll be concentrating on is going to be PathTrace, which uh, is interesting because some people I've been talking to yesterday, they were saying that they thought that Perf was about profiling, and uh, Perf, in fact, is about observability. It's about looking at the system in various ways. One of them is profiling, the other one is tracing. There are others that you can use together with Perf, like debugging or, or others. And uh, and, and, and this is trying to show how it is trying to use, trying to integrate with a even newer uh, technology that is taking the world by storm, which is eBPF. I'll be talking a bit about the eBPF and a bit about the workflow of Perf and how they are being combined and how eBPF is uh, solving some of the problems that we have when trying to do uh, tra uh, tracing of system calls uh, using Perf. Uh, so it's, it's trying to get one more thing in the two chests so that you can combine it with the other concepts that we, we already have in the, in the perf tools. Uh, it, it, it's not limited to syscalls. It's not limited to the interaction between programs and the kernel via the syscall interface. You can combine this with lots of other trace points that are available. For instance, the uh, scheduler trace points. You can see a S-trace-like output uh, augmented with uh, other e events, be it on the scheduler, be it on networking, be it on uh, the block, uh, the block uh, subsystem. Um, it's a way to re-implement something that we are used to, to use uh, as a diagnostic tools, S-trace, but it uses modern interfaces that overcome some limitations that are associated with the kernel interface, uh, kernel facility that's used to implement S-Trace, the system called Tracer. eBPF, um, uh, this is the top, uh, th this is something to be covered in f 50 talks. It's, it's, it's a lot, it's a lot of stuff. Uh, I just glance over what is eBPF and uh, as I go showing the problems that I'm solving using this technology, you're going to get some more information about what it is. BPF stands for Berkeley Packet Filter. So the thing is, uh, Van Jacobson, one of the uh, pioneers of the internet, he came with some, a way for you to filter packets to, uh, that you are, when you are troubleshooting a a network, you want to know wha what's happening, why a connection is not being established, or b why there is uh, a connection not being established, or, or, or what is happening on the, on, on this, on the network. So you use TCP dump or uh, uh, other packet sniffers. But the problem he had was that uh, even at that time, the, the amount of traffic was overwhelming. So you wanted to somehow tell the kernel that uh, 
you were interested just on some of the, the packets, so not all of them. So he came up with something it's called BPF, the classical BPF, which was a, uh, which is a, a virtual machine of sorts that you, you have a register uh, for and an indexer that and some instructions, and then you can come up with this assembly program that you attach and then every packet that comes, you go through it through this uh, expression, and uh, it does some operations, and if the packet matches that, it, it gets up to user space, and you're going to see it. For instance, you could say, I'm only interested in TCP packets uh, uh, for the uh, port 80, like HTTP packets. Uh, but this was in the past. Uh, fast forward to the future. In 2011, there was an effort to get this uh, classical BPF and uh, on the fly, uh, using a JIT compiler inside the kernel, transform this, this assembly into the native uh, instruction set, like x86-64 or ARM-64 or whatever. And this uh, was interesting. The Eric Dumazé, the guy who, who did it and now works for, for Google, uh, working on TCP on the, on the Linux kernel, he said that per packet, he, he got an improvement of 50 nanoseconds per packet. I mean, it, it, it looks like it's small, but for uh, now we have uh, uh, interfaces that are going over 100 gigabits per second, and uh, latency is all the time. I mean, uh, the pr cost of processing all those packets. So th that was another thing. And, and even before, they were using it to, not just for packet filtering, but to do uh, filtering on a on a connection, like with the socket filter, where, where you you tell the kernel that when something is coming to this connection, before you pass this to user space, you do some validation inside the kernel, closer to the hardware, so that you you get a better performance by doing it closer to the hardware. So afterwards came eBPF, which is extended BPF. Uh, BPF, the original BPF uh, it had just two registers, one of a specific purpose, like the indexing the packet contents. And, uh, and so for you to do more sophisticated things, it, it became I mean, complicated. It would require the, the use of a compiler, a full-blown compiler, to, to make use of these limited resources. So there was Alexei Starovoitov, a guy who now works for Facebook, he came up with a new uh, BPF uh, instruction set architecture. So he came up with one that is closer to what a modern processor, uh, the resources that a modern processor has. So it, it uses 64-bit registers. It, um, it uses seven registers, not just two. Uh, it, you can have calls, but these calls uh, 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 I mean, you, 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 don't, you, uh, you have a limitation of the number of calls that you make. It's, it's just tail calls. So you, you call a function, and this function has to do something and finish the whole program. And uh, it's completely validated by the kernel. So you, you get this program, you say, oh, I want to run it at some point, and then the kernel will first look at this instruction and see that there are no loops and that uh, it's not accessing something that it cannot access, and that if, if it's calling some kernel provided functions is just one of a set of, uh, of functions that were previously uh, validated and uh, it depends on, on the, the kind of uh, hook that you are using in the kernel. So, okay, the, the, this is now being used for things like XDP, which is express, express data path that helps to, uh, to fully utilize uh, the bandwidth that is available in um, fast network interface cards, uh, reducing or removing the need to use technologies such as DPDK, which is a, a, another technology for you to fully, uh, fully utilize fast uh, NICs. Uh, now people are, are doing, like uh, the, the guy from IBM said that uh, uh, the you have to, to do it in the open and uh, think about how this is going to be used by the Linux community or open source community or free software community. So the now there are uh, network interface cards, um, network cards that uh, you can pass BPF, eBPF programs so that it, it runs 
even closer to the hardware, in the hardware. So uh, you, you pass it to there, and it will translate from this instruction set to the native instruction set, be it some FPGA or whatever, and I'm going to run it there. BP filter, it's another thing that's using BPF. Uh, uh, BP uh, uh, the firewalling subsystem in Linux, it's, uh, I mean, it evolved over the years in several in iterations. There were, there were uh, several infrastructure that were trying all the time to to be more flexible, to allow decisions in different points. To I mean, but then it uh, made the, the the kernel more complicated. Uh, with BPF, you can do your all your firewall rules in, in user space, compile into a binary. This binary is validated first, and then you attach it to the. Uh, when, when the packet is entering the system and you can do the decision with more uh, expressiveness uh, and, and closer to the hardware or in the hardware. So it's theoretically possible, and I think I, I haven't read about it, but that you can write some firewalling rules and, and have them running on, on the network interface card. Uh, you, the operating system will not even see the, the packet if it doesn't match some rules that you have. Other things is that they are getting the getting the, the firewalling authentication uh, decisions up the stack. So it's not just on the IP or TCP levels. So they, they have modern uh, uh, protocols like uh, REST or uh, Kafka or all the protocols that are based on HTTP or higher level. And then you, you say that uh, without changing the, the application that will be servicing those uh, protocols, you can insert in the kernel in the middle and said, oh, if this HTTP request doesn't have this cookie or that must be obtained in this other way, behind the scenes, then you just drop the packet. So that, that's a really fast moving area. A uh, I, I, I good deal of the Facebook infrastructure right now is using this in production. Uh, lots of the, the developers involved in this are working uh, at, at Facebook. Uh, and uh, I mean, it's, it's changing a lot of things. It's changing a, a, lot, of the, a lot of things in, in, in these areas going through. So now back to Perf. Perf. Uh, I, I, this is just to, to show the workflow that normally you use with the Perf tools. You you have uh, uh, the uh, the uh, most basic use. You have report re record and report, and then. You run perf record some workload, or you specify that you want to record the events, and you can specify which events for some specific workload or for some specific running process or set of threads or anything that's running on some specific CPU or some specific C group or uh, for a specific user. There will be some examples uh, in, uh, throughout the, the the presentation, and then normally it 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 gets these events through a interface that the kernel provides, and then it's, it saves it in a file for post-processing that you can do with the report that we will classify this in various ways. You, you can classify it by program or by PID or by uh, library or uh, there are many ways for, for you to process this. You can do cross arc analysis. You can collect on a uh, smartphone and then get the file and put it on, on your workstation or of any kind of processor architecture and run. You have live at, uh, as well. You, you can do a perf top, and then you're going to have something like top, but uh, uh, not restricted to processes. You, you can see, oh, this is the function in the kernel that's taking most of the time, or, or that is generating more of this kind of event, and, and so on and so forth. And you can have annotate, which you can do uh, on a perf data file. You, you can see. Oh, uh, this is the source code, or this is the assembly for for some process, for some uh, program that run um, before, and then you see which lines were taking the events and etc. That there are various ways to for you to do that, and you can do it live as well. You can run perf top, and then uh, at, uh, you see some functions here. Oh, what's happening inside inside of this function? You press enter, and then you you're gonna show the, the source code or the assembly if the source code is not available. And you're going to see which are the lines where the event is taking place, or multiple events are taking place. So this is taking more cycles here because it's accessing some, some memory, it, it, but the cache is, is having uh, cache miss 
as th that's that's because you, your working set is bigger than than the cache of, of your um, uh, processor. So, perf record basically, uh, I I use this uh, as example. Uh, the event that's recorded on this specific case, the, it's the syscalls, sysenter, futex. Futex is one of the syscalls that the kernel provides that is used for a mutual mutual exclusion for for you to implement. Uh, locking in user space. Okay, so I, I run perf record dash A, which means I want to record for the whole system, and then the event that I'm interested in is just the futex syscall when it enters this this, this uh, syscall, and run for for 10 seconds. It will when 10 seconds are passed by, it will stop, and then you're gonna see that the file was generated has that many megabytes, etc. Afterwards, you you have another of the tool, which another tool, which is perf ev list, going to list what are the events that are in this file. So th that's uh, we just recorded was uh, sysent of few tags. And uh, if I if I ask for the trace fields, this this is building up for the the the, the slides, uh, the, the next slides where we're going to be using this thing to do an S trace. And you see that you have the syscall number. And then there are the arguments for the syscall, uh, for the Futex syscall. Another tool in the perf 2 chess is perf script that you can use for, do for doing scripting in, p in Python or Perl to process the events that you just recorded or that some somebody else recorded. So you can see there that you have the values for, for the events. Th there were several Futex calls during those 10 seconds, and then you see what was the values for th those parameters. So again, you can use these tools, all, all the perf tools, uh, to uh, for different targets, which is something that uh, was not possible with S-Trace. S-Trace, you, you just record one process, or the process and the process that it creates after some time. W with this technique, w using the perf infrastructure, you can do more uh, like uh, the the whole system that would be overwhelming, but sometimes you can limit this to just some of the syscalls or just the syscalls that take more time or, or, or so on and so forth. And you can see CPU, PID, or TID, or just a user. Uh, one example here: uh, uh, system-wide tracing. You do perf trace dash e futex duration one. So you're gonna see all the futex syscalls that took more than uh, one millisecond. And you're going to see what are the names of the processes and so on and so forth. So this is, this is, is something that you cannot do with S trace, and it's potentially uh, it's interesting. Uh, there will be more uh, examples where this will be shown in a more uh, hands-on way. So uh, there are details on how you can use this to to limit uh, the 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 amount of of information that you're going to get from using doing a, a S-trace system-wide. This is another thing which is uh, interesting, like uh, an example. It, was, uh, you, it enumerates the threads that some user has, and then it we're going to uh, trace just those, those threads. So the test is for me to trace name D, the, the DNS name server, while I, I, I send some think packets uh, that will generate some, some DNS uh, so, so this is another way that uh, I, I think that S trace has this dash dash summary summary as well. So I say trace summary, uh, the username D, and I'm interested only on syscalls that end in MSG and few tags and for two seconds. And so at this uh, at the end, it shows that name D in fact had uh, one, two, three, four, four threads involved in s resolving the the. The address that Ping was uh, doing, so Ping local, uh, Ping www.google.com. But well, it will uh, generate traffic. So you see that there was four threads, and then there was few tags. So they were doing some synchronization, and one thread asking to uh, another, and so on and so forth. So th this provides a good initial overview of what happens when a name D uh, domain name server receives a, a request for for a resolution of, of a name. And uh, so this is just another example. 
Th this example uh, shows uh, using uh, backtraces, so so that you can see what is the series of functions that goes to the to that syscall that I'm looking at. And this is, is interesting in in, in uh, the, the comparison. Uh, if you use S trace, one of the problems is that by using P trace, it will uh, the way that it does this 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 monitoring is costly. So we we do a baseline with uh, running a a DD uh, or data dump. Uh, it will generate five uh, five hundred thousand uh, records of just one byte. And uh, it says that it, it managed to do 1.7 megabytes per second. This is, the, this is your program, the program that you are interested in understanding or in analyzing, uh, running without uh, any monitoring. So uh, it's no, no, you are not looking at it. So as soon as you look at it, uh, there will be some overhead, and it will behave in a different way. So you are interested in reducing the, uh, the, this uh, interference. So the S trace overhead, oh, it, it went to 41.9 kilobytes per second. So it's way down. I mean, this is a pathological case because it's a lot of sys calls and, and just small uh, bytes. But it's interesting to, to uh, show. And, and it, with S trace, in the same way that I showed with path trace, you can do S trace dash E accept. You are only interested on the accept sys call. I use this one. In fact, Brandon Gregg, who, who did this example, used accept because accept is not used by, by DD. So even, even for tracing something that is not used by your workload, uh, the overhead is there. Uh, so uh, the, 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 the point here is that P-Trace the, pauses the application twice. So you say, I want to look at, at this program. It doesn't matter what program. I want to look at this program. When this program makes a system call, which is what, what we are interested, uh, the kernel will have to stop this and wake up the, the process that is doing the S trace or, or the monitor. And uh, this program will be scheduled. It will uh, emit more syscalls to ask the kernel for perhaps information about the, the pointers, to traverse those pointers, and et cetera. It, and it does this when it enters the kernel and when it exits the kernel. So P trace overhead. You run it, and the P trace was uh, uh, 1.36 times lower. Uh, th this happens bec because of the way that, that perf uh, runs. Uh, it, it doesn't stop the the, the workload. DD is not stopped. When, when DD asks for writing to the kernel, it gets to the syscall write. It just, uh, the perf infrastructure will just get the, 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 the parameters for, for the syscall and we'll put it into a ring buffer. And uh, later on, it will wake up perf so that perf can go and, and read that. This is asynchronous. This can lead to a data loss. But if, if this data loss happens because the, the buffer was not so big or because the, the number of syscalls is so high or because you are collecting more stuff per syscall, then you will be able to tell the user, oh, th th there was data loss here, and you, and you can increase the, 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 the size of the, the ring buffer, or you can uh, use another technique. So perf, rec perf recording basically uses a ring buffer. There is no contact switch. It's asynchronous. And, and you can notice reliably when there was data loss. That's a, and you have a met, meta, metadata records that tells you um, uh, when a new process is born, or what's the name, or uh, when the process uh, gets, uh, terminates, or when there is a contact switch as well. There, there are several uh, records that help in correlating the samples that you take with the which library the, this, this, this sample was taken, or the, the PID, and, and several other things. Uh, so th that, that's, how, that's how perf use, uh, uh, works. And, and now we get to another aspect of this talk, is that uh, oh, perf is developed in the kernel, in the, in the, in the kernel source tree. Uh, at the time, it was a first. Uh, perf started as a demonstration in the documentation directory. Then it moved to a separate uh, tools directory. 
and this tools directed uh, directory went on growing and growing. And, and nowadays we have BPF tool. We have several other uh, tools that are being developed inside the kernel because they are tools that are closer to what the, the kernel community uh, needs and, and to test new features and etc. So. It, it can be considered as a proof of concept of how to utilize these new uh, uh, kernel um, infrastructure, kernel APIs, but it's not tied to, to a specific version of the kernel. You can use a new perf tool in an older kernel, and then it will realize that some of the features that it needs, it's not there, and we will do fallback, so we will inform the user that if, if he or she is asking for some specific feature that requires kernel uh, functionality. So, but being this kernel source three allows us to, to experiment with some other stuff. We, we, we started trying to use kernel headers directly to build the tools because the data structure was there. So when they change, we get it. But then at, at some point it was breaking the build and then the, we were putting undue burden on the kernel developers. So we decided to keep a copy of, and then we check when we are building the perf tools if the, 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 this copy drifted. And having those copies, we can do techniques like um, uh, like this. Uh, we can create uh, beautifiers, uh, tables. Because when, when you get to the syscall layer, you have just a number. And, and, and when you are showing this to the user, you want to say that, oh, that number two, by the way, it's a uh, 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 internet. It's an internet socket and not a... a, a uh, LLC or IPX or Bluetooth or whatever. So we, we, we get those, those files and we process them to generate those, those tables. We basically use grep and sed, it's not anything uh, sophisticated. The end result is that we have several shell files that process several parameters like IOCTLs for KVM or IOCTLs for DRM or uh, the sound driver. And it works like this. It, it, you you will generate on the fly as part of the build a table, and then when you get to the PR, CTL, syscall, and you, you need to, to, to get that number and show it in a way that's uh, symbolic, you, you translate use these things. In the future, this will allow us to do something like S-trace, and I, I'm only interested on the PR, CTL, syscall when the parameter is uh, get or set unaligned. You, you could do a substring search for the symbolic name and then this will be translated into a eBPF um, a binary that will be attached to the syscall and then it will do the filtering uh, right next to the syscall event. Uh, so when you do trace dash EPRCTL, we're gonna see the, the, those set name, set name, set name, set pdef sign, which otherwise would be just numbers. Uh, you have simple beautifiers like uh, for PID. There are lots of syscalls that have uh, PIDs, and, th and then you just show the, the name of the, the, the process instead of just the. So if you do li like this, uh, syscalls operating on PIDs, you can go to that directory where you have the, the list of events, the, 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 the trace points, the syscall events, and you see the parameters for them, and you see the type that's PID. And then if you run, uh, you're going to see that, for instance, uh, those that are in, um, in italics were, were translated, and you see that uh, PID 2 is system D, or PID uh, 23015 is the DHCP helper, and so on and so forth. So, so it's a trace, but with more information for you to make, sh make sense of uh, the output. So it will basically, to specify syscalls, you, you use the same uh, mechanism that you use with S-trace, dash E, and then a sleep. Oh, you can do with uh, backtrace as well. So the, the, the point to stress here is that uh, the features that you are seeing in trace are available in the other tools as well. The way for you to specify that you want for a specific PID or for a specific CPU is the same. So if you are, Use it to perf top or perf start. Or perf, uh, you 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 get to this more easily. Then we get to close to what is 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 needed to uh, for 
utilizing eBPF to solve a problem. When you get to the Cisco um, interface, you get just integers, 64-bit uh, integers, so five. Uh, even, uh, you, you can have a Cisco that has two or three or four or five, or even uh, some Cisco's may have a, a, a variable number of, of, of arguments, like few text. If you do a few text, some, some comments, you have several arguments. If you have few text and not a comment, you have just one or maybe none. So, but when you get to open, you, you see the first case, the, the most canonical one, uh, the file name. The file name is just a pointer. You, you have to collect this pointer somehow. So, uh, the way to do that was initially was for you to put a K probe, to, to put a breakpoint in, in, in the kernel where this file name is copied from user space to kernel space. So when you do that, maybe even incurring in a page fault or whatever, after you do that, it's there. You copy, put it into the ring buffer. Later on, you combine this thing in the tool, and you, and you get it to work. But it's fragile. It's, uh, if the kernel changes, you have to figure out where now this thing is, whatever. We will use eBPF later for that. So. Uh, somebody asked me yesterday how to put a, a probe in the kernel someplace. That, that's how you do it. You say perf probe, and then you give a name. Uh, the name that I sho have chosen for, for this was VFS get name. But this, this event that I'm creating now th that will be available for use in the other perf tools, including perf trace, it's VFS get name. It will be placed in the function get name flags in the kernel because I have not specified any other binary. And when I do that, that's the kernel that I'm referring to. And at the line 72, 72 like in, in, the, in the source code, you, you get the source code for that, and it's a 72 at the 70th second line from the start of the function. You, you can use perf probe to show the, 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 the function source and, and show the numbers and say, oh, I want to put it here. And this will could be the basis for a graphical user interface. You could go there and, and click there, and then the end result would be the same. So, and uh, furthermore, I want to, at this point, when this happens, when something passes through that point in the kernel, I want to collect that result, result uh, arrow name, which is a string. And that's the name of the variable in the kernel at that point. And it will put it into the perf ring buffer with that name, path name. So later on, when this takes place, I can uh, correlate that with uh, the open syscall that's, th that's ha happening at, at that point, as we will see. This is how you put a K probe in the kernel. And, and you could do this for a user space binary as well. You could put this into Apache or Firefox or whatever. You, you just do some research, find out where you want to put some, some probes, and you put it there, and then when it gets there, it will get into the perforating buffer. And this becomes a, a new event that's available in a machine up to the point when you delete it or you reboot the machine. So uh, you go to tracing syscalls minus pl plus this probe, and then you're going to see that uh, the probe VFS uh, get name, it's an event. I asked for this probe VFS get name in the trace command line. And then you, you see that uh, it's, it's working. Uh, I, I just touched it, touched it uh, at uh, passwd and that's it and et cetera. And um, various uh, events of that kind took place. Some of them for the process of loading this binary and, and the one that we expect. That's the, the last one. And if you uh, now say uh, the same thing, but now you want to see the open syscall, uh, and, and it will combine. Path trace will combine this under the hood. It will combine and going to see the, the thing. But, but this is fragile, and with eBPF, we're going to see it better uh, and a better solution. So eBPF, uh, more details about how this, this thing works. Uh, Wang Na, a, a developer at Huawei in China, he developed uh, the integration of Perf with the infrastructure that is needed for you to get a C file, a, a, a C program, a restricted C program that we're going to see some examples. And uh, notice that this is 
uh, when you s when you s uh, uh, ask Perf for an event, it will figure out what component will serve this thing. It could be a hardware uh, counter, it could be a software counter, it could be a trace point, it could be a, a K probes, it could be uh, many events. When you when you would say to Perf that this is like hello.c, it says, oh, this is eBPF. I have to call uh, LLVM and Clang to build this thing, generate a binary, get this binary validated, and then load it to the kernel using eBPF. It does all the d these details under the hood. So it, it we end up calling this syscall called C uh, uh, BPF, and it, it will attach this thing, this 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 just compile it eBPF bytecode uh, to the kernel via sysbpf. There is a comment for program load, and then you're going to say where to attach this thing. I want to attach this thing to that VFS get name, perhaps, or to a syscall, or to some other place. So, or, or every time the, 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 the operating system kernel does a scheduling decision, I want to run some eBPF and collect some extra data. This is possible. So uh, it, it works as filters. So you can do several things there. And you can as well say, oh, this trace point, don't put it on the ring buffer. Are, are we going to see an example? Uh, so and with this, we are able to copy that uh, pointer uh, arguments and get them into a way that is more uh, that's not fragile, that's uh, uh, more easily parsable by the perf trace. It doesn't have to do the correlation. Everything is going to come in, into just one record. This is call arguments plus these other things. So uh, let's see uh, the, the next step, step. Some more details about eBPF, the, the validator. It will check the program control flow graph. It will say, look, oh, this program will finish. Uh, this program uh, doesn't have loops. The program doesn't have any place that is unreachable. Uh, it will look at lots of things that are involved into exploiting the kernel using uh, the, the existing interface. Uh, it, it checks lots of things. If, if you try to access something that was not uh, initialized, that, that's a way for you to collect some information that was there just before and, uh, and do a side channel, and et cetera. And uh, it has program types. So you have program types that, that will say, uh, it's if you say this program is for tracing, then you only can attach this thing in some places. And um, if you say that's for tracing, that there is a set of functions that you can use that the kernel provides. And but but if this is for uh, accelerating uh, processing uh, the processing of packets, then there is another set of uh, of, of functions. If you are processing packets, uh, perhaps you you need to look at the at, at the packets, and perhaps you you want even to change those things. So you, you have to say what you want to do in this program type, and it will also decides uh, what is the first argument. For instance. The of interest for, for this uh, talk is for trace points. For trace points, the first argument is the record with the, the contents of the syscall. The, the, the first parameter, the second parameter, all the parameters. So some program types. So socket filter, uh, I say that even before eBPF, you could attach some, some of this bytecode uh, just before getting to the application and say, oh, if the payload of this application doesn't have this, drop it. It's not uh, validated closer to the to the or origin. Could be in a K probe as well, uh, on a trace point, XDP, and there are several waters. Uh, XDP is, is like socket filter, but it's more uh, close to the network interface card. Um, so th this is an example of a program, a restricted C program. So you you have to. If you say this age error timer nano sleep, and then you say uh, the the variable that you want to collect, and afterward you 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 you, dec uh, you have a C function that receives as the first argument CTX, which is the context, which is the the, the in this case will be the the set of registers because this is for a a K probes. This thing will put a K probe into that specific function at the start of that function, 
and we will ask for the TV and sec. And it, if the number of nanoseconds is uh, greater than uh, 1,000, then this thing will be considered. So this is the, the a, a tracing, uh, the thing. So if you say uh, uh, use lip one, it will not it, it will not show. If you say two thousand, then it will appear on on, on the thing. And you, you can combine all those things with, with backtrace. So this is. Uh, So uh, well, the, the latest uh, work is in, in simplifying those eBPF scripts. So for instance, if you, this is a halo world that as of some, some months ago. So th this, you say on, on the syscall enter for open at, which is a syscall, you just the put as hello world. And then when you run it, it will do work like that. So uh, you are simplifying it. And the really recent one, which I was even doing while coming here, it's uh, the culmination of this, being able to uh, augment the syscalls by collecting the pointer arguments. So uh, you, will, uh, you will attach to the syscall enter and will produce in the, the perforating buffer exactly the same record that the syscall trace point did, but will add to the end the pointer contents. It will use the BPF output event, which is the way for you to connect the BPF and perf worlds. Uh, there is a function, one, one function that you can use in BPF program, which is BPF perf event output, which will get the, 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 the data that you want into the perf ring buffer. And BPF probe read and probe read STR, which is the way for you to collect. So this is the, the augmented uh, open syscall. Uh, that syscall on the parameters should be open. But, then, but basically, you want to read the, the, um, the, the, the whole record for, for the syscall for the Cisco enter, plus you're going to read the, the file name value. And then you're going to use perf event output to put it on the, on the perf ring buffer. There are some details in there, but then you use it here. Uh, you say uh, perftrace-e augmented syscalls.c, it will see, oh, it's a C file. So I have to compile this, turn it to, into a eBPF bytecode, and um, load it into, into the kernel, and it will connect inside to the open uh, uh, trace point. And then it runs cat hello.c, which is the workload that you are running cat hello.c will output the contents of the file, and below you see that now uh, the file name argument has the, the pointer expanded. So that's how augmented syscall is working. And this is the last one, which is et cetera snoop, uh, where all these things can be combined with filtering. So uh, if you, you have the beauty main, uh, main compare, and you say, oh, if the file name has et cetera in it, so then I will do the perf event output and we'll consider this thing. So if I run this, then uh, it will be just like that, perf trace dash e et cetera snoop dot c, which is the program. And you're going to see which access are being made to file, what, what, what files are being opened in the et cetera uh, directory. Well, that's it. Time for questions. If you have any questions, you can, and you can ask the question in Portuguese if you feel like it. So you give an example when you do a, a syscall enter for open at, and yes. there is a structure that you can, uh, for example, you can play with the, the arguments. So th this is provided, that's right, yeah. So for example, in this case, it's void. In the, the next example, you have like something as a structure. To make, make yeah, you, you, you can have the argument like, oh, 
Uh, yeah, Cisco enter open args. Right, this is provided by perf, or should I create this by hand before trying to use it? The thing is, uh, you can come up with this structure by looking at the TraceFS file. Do you remember that, that you, you have all the, all the trace points in the system. You can see what is the layout for its payload, what it puts into the perforating buffer. Looking at the file that's human readable, and then there is the offsets and etc. In this case specifically, I, I manually created from that definition this uh, struct Cisco enter open arcs that I haven't included here because the, the screen is so small. Uh, but this can conceiv conceivably and should be done automatically by Perf. Perf can look at this and create the, the data structure, and you don't have to include it. It will be uh, automatically included. Okay. Thank you. More questions? Again, you can ask in Portuguese if, if you want. And I will answer in Portuguese as well. I can do that. Eu vou fazer em português, então. Okay. É, no BTF clássico, a memória da, uh, da máquina virtual é, é onde ficam os pacotes que chegam na rede, certo? Sim, sim, sim. No caso do, do eBPF, no caso quando você vai atachar um, um código bytecode uh, numa syscall, no, no kprobe que você falou, uh, o que, que é a, fica como memória da, da virtual machine? Então, é, o, você, você tem a pilha ali, você viu ali, eu posso colocar no início da função uma série de variáveis, e daí eu posso acessar essas variáveis, e eu posso acessar o que vem como argumento para ela. É, o acessar como argumento para ela vai envolver você usar essas essas funções, probe read, probe read str, de tal forma que o kernel possa fazer isso, levando em consideração possíveis page faults, que ele faça validações adicionais, etc. Então, é, é esse o ponto. E daí existe uma série de funções para você acessar certas informações adicionais que você tem interesse. Por exemplo, é, quem é o, o PID de, que está nesse ponto, nesse, quando, quando interrompeu, qual é o PID? Qual é o, o TG ID? Uma série de outras coisas. É, a, existe outra forma de você acessar, por exemplo, o, o, como o BPF clássico, o conteúdo do pacote. Então, a lista de funções e o que você pode fazer por tipo de programa, tem uns 15 tipos de programa, varia. O, o validador vai olhar o que é e vai ver o que, é que você pode fazer em cada um desses contextos, que é variado, não, não é comum a todos eles. Uma outra coisa assim, por exemplo, quando você, você pode rodar um BPF como um usuário normal, sem, sem CAPS admin, sem ser root. Mas aí você não pode fazer aritmética, você tem umas restrições adicionais, as restrições mais stringentes. Tem uma série de nobs que foram sendo colocados, até para evitar o uso de BPF para explorar spectre, meltdown, sei lá, que ele deve falar depois. É, para você controlar o que, é que você quer. Entendeu? Ainda assim é insuficiente para que uma série de organizações considere isso para uso. Está mudando o kernel, etc. Então, talvez é um outro vetor, aumenta a superfície de contato. Mas precisa olhar na documentação lá o que, que você pode fazer em cada um dos casos. Uhum. E, e com relação ao, ao bytecode em si, que é gerado uh, depois Sim. da compilação, que ele vai ser atachado já em kernel space, onde que exatamente é, o kernel aloca o espaço para esse bytecode e transfere então, para a é, máquina virtual da, executar. Você, você, é, você, inicialmente, você fazia o assembly na mão. Você tinha lá um monte de macrinho, você fazendo ali e tal, e daí você tinha uma, uma ferramenta lá que gerava o bytecode. Hoje em dia, isso é feito com é, com Clang. Você usa o Clang, pega um programa em C ou em assembly, é BPF, e ele vai, fazer, vai passar pelos passos de otimização, vai fazer uma série de coisas lá. Ele, às vezes, até faz coisas que o verificador no kernel não gosta. Ele faz uma otimização que faz parecer que ele está usando um, um, um valor que foi passado por user space para acessar a memória no kernel e daí ele recusa. Eu tive um problema desse. Mas, mas eu digo assim, uma vez que, tá, que já passou pelo verificador. Tá, passou pelo verificador. Eu, aí o, o kernel pode usar isso através de um interpretador. Ele vai, como era no clássico lá, ele vai lá uhum. e, Qual a primeira instrução? Ah, é load. Load o quê? Ah, isso aqui. Ele vai interpretando isso no, no, no loop. 
Então, e esse código fica onde? Essa é minha Fica no, onde? em algum lugar no kernel que eu ah. não vou, assim, especificamente, ele vai alocar memória para esse cara, vai deixar lá associado aquele ponto, quando chega nesse ponto, verifica que tem alguém que está é, que conectou ali e que ele pode fazer isso, está no contexto adequado, se é um processo ou se é uma CPU que foi dita, e, e vai interpretar aquilo ali. Isso pode também, no kernel tem um, um JIT, tem um compilador JIT. Várias arquiteturas já tem, tá? além da X864. Ele vai, ele vai, depois da validação, vai transformar isso em código nativo. E vai rodar, vai transferir o controle para ele e vai voltar. Sabendo que a validação já disse que esse programa termina num tempo curto, é, e ele termina. Ele não, não vai entrar no loop, não vai travar ali dentro, não vai acessar nada aqui. Isso foi tudo validado a, previamente. Obrigado. E, e também, uma outra coisa que ele, hoje em dia, é, tem Smart NICs, é, que você, você vai, passa para o NIC fazer já. Você passa para o NIC e o NIC lá vai... Ou, ou antes de passar para o NIC, você faz esse JIT, ou em alguns casos o NIC mesmo já faz isso aí. E daí, por exemplo, a decisão do firewall é feita completamente fora do, do, da máquina tradicional. Existe algum design desse open source? Ou não? Eu, a, o pessoal da Netronome tem, uma, tem uma, uma palestra sobre isso recente, que eu estava até lendo agora há pouco. Quando terminar aqui, eu passo para você. Ele, ele tem lá a especificação para Network Flow Processor. É, Network Flow Processor, e daí tem lá... As, ele tem uma palestra recente. Eu, acho que, eu não sei se ele já deu a palestra ou vai dar a palestra daqui a pouco. Mas tudo isso é extremamente novo. Obrigado. Ok. Uh, time is over. Thank you.